This is Dr. Juwan. Thank you for tuning to my channel. If you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button down below. I'm going to try something different. What I want to do is that I get a lot of questions and comments on my videos and a lot of them, I try to answer them as brief as possible and as easy as possible. However, there's a lot of questions that are very, very valid that it seems like it's a lot deeper than I could just answer on the surface. So this is one of the reasons why I encourage you to book me for a consultation, www.totalwellnessdupage.com. And let's talk because a lot of times these questions are coming in and it seems like there's, there's an underlining meaning to them than just saying you know, a brief answer. This is why I always recommend further testing. I do comprehensive blood panels. I do a Dutch test, Oats test, Cyrex testing, and so forth and so on because a lot of times there is, it's downstream. So if there's something wrong with a certain like number or condition, that could be due to something that's coming way up here. So I always say, here's where the, the smoke is at, but the fire is all the way up here. So what you're experiencing is just the residu residual of the fire and going downstream. So one of the videos I get a lot of questions on is, about bile, about the gallbladder, I got it removed. Now what? And I'm going to do. I did a video that I have the. I'll, I'll have it linked below, on how bile is made because bile is very, very important, and a lot of people don't understand that it's made from cholesterol, which going upstream, it's made from fatty acids, and 75% of the bile that we make is recycled. One of the, you know, there's many functions of the bile, so. When you get to the gallbladder, the gallbladder is like a big blender and it spins and it mixes it up to about 10 to 20 times depending on what, depending on what research you're reading. Now, when you have a fatty food, okay, it, when it goes to the stomach, it sends a signal to the gallbladder to squeeze out bile to help break down the fatty foods so we can absorb the fat soluble vitamins, vitamins A, D, E, and K. Now, when you get the gallbladder removed, now the main question is, should I get it or should I not? Now, that's a valid question. Uh, my response is, if you have one or two small stones, we could work together to get rid of the stones and break it up. However, if you have just big, ginormous stones, it's kind of too late. You have no other choice but to get, but to get it removed. The problem is, once you get it removed, what I've experienced is that the doc, the, nobody has told you that you need to take a digestive enzyme for the rest of your life. Not when you're having like small foods, but when you're having like the big foods, like the breakfast, the lunches, the dinners, things like that, because you need extra help to break down the food because you don't have a gallbladder anymore. There's another supplement that I recommend as well. Now, again, I can't recommend any brands. This helps as well. This will help before the, while you're taking the foods, help break it down. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, let's start with this video about should I take bile salts? In addition to, there's, I attach a link down below, gallbladder removed, what to do now. Let's talk about bile. What, what is bile? Why is it important? Why do we need it? What, what's the difference between bile salts and bile acid? Now, with the link below, I explain through the process of making bile, how bile acids do turn into bile salts. What's the difference between bile salts and bile acids? At this point, let's just say they are the same. Watch the video down below to, to have a further understanding of what happens in the process of bile, which makes, which makes bile acids and bile salts. Okay, so let's just start off real, in the basics. So remember, bile, bile is a digestive liquid that's it's produced in the liver and it contains bile salts and other substances that help break down fats from our diet. So when you eat a fatty substance food like fish, avocado, so forth and so on, bile is released to help break that down and that's called emulsification. And we produce, the liver produces about 500 to 600 milliliters of bile every day. So, and bile consists mainly, primarily of water and electrolytes, but it also contains organic compounds like bile salts cholesterol, phospholipids, bilirubin, which are recycled blood cells, and ingested compounds such as proteins. There's a lot of good stuff that bile is made out of. Okay, so the color of bile, bile is a greenish yellow color, and 
it's in charge of aiding the digestion once the food gets into the duodenum, which is the first part of the small intestines. So waste products are also eliminated from the body when they're secreted in the bile. So bile is very, very important. So bile is stored and concentrated in the gallbladder by 10 times. And the, gall, the gallbladder will store the bile until they're needed to perform digestion. So when you eat a fatty substance, what happens once it goes through the duodenum, the first part of the small intestines, it has a signal, CCK, that opens up the bile duct to secrete out the bile, the enzymes and secretions to help them do their job, which is to start to emulsify fats. So bile salts are synthesized in liver cells and which are called hepatocytes and then stored in the gallbladder and secreted in the first part of the small intestines. They are reabsorbed and returned to the liver. But remember, 75% of bile is recycled because our body likes to recycle the ingredients already used rather than always having to make more. Okay, so bile serves two important functions. One, bile plays an important role in fat digestion and, and absorption, not because of the enzymes in the bile that, that cause fat digestion, it's because it's the bile acids in the bile that perform two important functions. One, they help emulsify the large fat particles of the food into many smaller ones. The surface of which then can be attacked by lipase enzymes. Now lipase enzymes are the fat digestible enzymes made in the pancreas. So two, bile serves as a means for excretion of several important waste products from the blood. The waste products include in particular, bilirubin. Bilirubin is the breakdown of red blood cells, of one of the products of red blood cells, and uh, in addition to excess cholesterol. Okay, so the, here's one of the questions. What's the difference between bile salts and bile acid? Most of the time, these terms are used interchangeably, but technically they're different because of the structure and biological characteristics. Bile salts make up the collective term for bile acids and bile, al and bile alcohol sulfates, which is another major component of bile. So when the bile acid is combined with amino acids, glycine and taurine, this forms bile salts. So you have bile acids, when it's formed, I'm sorry, when it's combined into, with taurine and glycine, it becomes bile salts. And one of the bile salts that I put a video in is called tutka. So bile acid actually turns into bile salts when conjugated with these amino acids. So they collect, so they come together with the amino acid, with these amino acids to become this end product. So that being said, you may notice that bile salts are sometimes called bile acid, but this just combine them together. So what are the benefits of bile salts? Remember, bile salts is very, very important. One, it helps eliminate, eliminate cholesterol and toxic compounds. Two, it helps fight infectious agents. It promotes gallbladder and liver function. It helps dissolve gallstones. It allows for, allows for the digestion uh, and absorption of fats and nutrients. It affects the bacteria in the gut. It helps control blood sugar levels. It triggers the release of glutathione. Glutathione is an amazing amino acid, the master amino acid antioxidant that's produced in the liver and it decreases over age. It helps eliminate bilirubin. So, when it comes to the bile, bile salts, bile acids, it helps with the, gut, with the gut microbiome. So this is a very, very important to have a healthy micro, um, a gut micro, microbiome in the small intestines because remember, 75% of it is, re, is re, uh, recycled. Okay, so now what's the relationship between bile acids and cholesterol? Remember, everything starts with cholesterol. Cholesterol makes bile acids, bile salts. So if you are on a statin medication or a cholesterol medication, yes, you are going to decrease the production of these bile acids and it's gonna affect how you break down foods. So bile acids are made by your liver and friendly bacteria in your gut. Now remember, 75% of all, of all cholesterol is made by our own body and 25% of it's made from food. So the majority of cholesterol that we, that we have is recycled. This is why if you go on a low fat diet, what's gonna happen? You're gonna increase your cholesterol levels by going on a low fat diet. If you have poor digestion, if you have non-alcoholic fatty liver, sure, your cholesterol numbers are gonna go up. If you're stressed out, it's gonna go up. So bile acids, bile acids, the primary pathway for cholesterol catabolism, which is the breakdown of cholesterol, it helps make 
Vitamin D helps with cellular membranes. It helps with hormones. And again, it helps even with bile. And statin drugs stop the production of cholesterol, which affect vitamin D levels, cellular membranes, hormones, and bile. So people who are on statin medications, which are cholesterol medications, yes, you're going to have gut dysfunction, gut biosis. You're going to have non-alcoholic fatty liver stuff, okay? So I'm not saying that you could get off, to get off statins, but do the research on what you can do to overcome it. Because 50% 50, 50 of our cholesterol turnover is controlled by the bile salts. And one of the benefits of bile salts, it helps lowers the low density lipoproteins of your, of your cholesterol numbers. If you have a bad gut, think about it. If you have a bad gut, sure, one of the reasons why those, the bad cholesterol is going to be increased. So if you help your gut, sure, it's going to help the cholesterol numbers. So the question is, should I have my gallbladder removed? My answer is, I don't know. I don't know. I can't answer that question. If you have big stones, sure, it's too late. Have it removed and make sure you use this supplement with every meal, with every big meal, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner, to help aid in the digestion process. However, if you have small stones, now remember, what is the function of the gallbladder? To help squeeze out bile to break down fats. So let's go upstream. So if you have a low fat diet or if you have a high sugar diet, yeah, you're, you're, going to, you're going to create stones because what are those stones made out of? It's called cholesterol stones. So what's the function of the gallbladder? To help break down fatty acids. So if you're on a low fat diet, sure, you're gonna gump up the gallbladder. Now, what are the symptoms of gallbladder stuff? Typically, right shoulder pain. Why? Because the phrenic nerve goes through the right shoulder, which helps innervate the gallbladder. Now, I always say if you have gallbladder, if you know if it's gallbladder stuff, then massage the gallbladder, preferably on your back with your knees up, massage it, and if the pain goes away, yeah, most likely it's your gallbladder. Other symptoms are gas, bloaty, constipation, uh, diarrhea because it's irregularity, it's irregular function of the gallbladder. Now the question is, do you do you need your gallbladder? Yes, yes, you do. I always say you're a thousand piece puzzle, and if you get rid of one of the pieces, the part in the brain that says, "Hey, where's my gallbladder?" This is where you have like what's called you know phantom limb syndrome when it comes to lost limbs, but you'll have post cholecystectomy syndrome meaning that the gallbladder should be there, but it's not. And these are the symptoms that occur after the gallbladder is removed. And it occurs about 40% of the time. I've seen a lot more than less. And this is gas, you know, gas, bloating, anal link leakage, nauseous, constipation, diarrhea, headaches, depression, brain fog, all that stuff. Why? Because the gallbladder is removed. So what's going on is that, remember, the function of the gallbladder is to, is to store and concentrate bile for up to 10 to 20 times. And when you have a fatty, substance, fatty food, it helps break that down. Breaks it down for the, to the fat-soluble vitamins, vitamins A, D, E, and K. So if you have a, def and fish oil and DHA, sorry. So if you have a deficiency of these vitamins, vitamin A, what's gonna happen? Vision problems at night. Vitamin D, what's going to happen? You're going to have bone pain. You're going to have calcium problems because one of the functions of uh, D is to act as anti-inflammatory. Vitamin E, you're going to have heart problems. It's also good for your pituitary gland and fertility. Vitamin K, vitamin K1 is for bleeding. You're going to start, you'll have bleeding uh, situations. You'll have easy bruising. Vitamin K2 is for calcium reabsorption in the bone. You're going to have calcium deposits. Fish oil is good for, you know, for your brain, for your memory. DHA, DHA, which is part of the fish oil, EPA and DHA, you're gonna have memory problems because DHA is good for your brain, it's good for your eyes. So the question is, what causes these stones? Now remember, what's happening is these stones are made of, of cholesterol. So you have too much concentration of cholesterol because you're not eating the fatty substance foods to help break it, to help make it work. So you're having too little bile salts. So the question, next question I get is, so what depletes bile salts? Well, birth control, cortisol, due to high insulin, 
liver damage, which the liver makes the bile. You're going to have low friendly the uh, colon bacteria because one of the functions of bile is to create this, this lovely microbiome. Then you'll have, con you'll have constipation, again, PPTs, no, I'm sorry, PPIs, which are anti acid. So it's going to start out the stomach and not produce enough acid. So, what about the diet? You got to change the diet. Everything starts at diet. Yes, I talk about supplementation for assistance, but everything starts at the diet. Now again, what is the function of the gallbladder to help break down fatty substances? So what you got to do is decrease your carbohydrates to decrease the insulin release. Increase your vegetables because vegetables are filled with nutrients and minerals and vitamins that help clean out the microbiome. You want to increase your fat. Low fat diets created gallbladder problems because what makes cholesterol? Fat. What makes bile? Cholesterol. So if you choke it at the beginning, sure, you're going to have these problems. So you want to increase your fats and modify dairy as well and alcohol. Okay, so let's get to some of the questions. So one of the questions I get, it's, I'm so tired right now, I'm full of anxiety, I had my gallbladder removed at 18 years old, I'm all, I, it almost exploded, the gallstones were so bad. Okay, the gallstones were so bad at 18 years old, the question is always, what's your diet like? They never told me about bile salt or digestive enzymes or anything. I've had the worst quality of life with digestion, I'm feeling sick constantly. I have diarrhea more often than regular. Now the question is, what brands do I recommend? Remember, I cannot recommend a brand because of copyright laws. So what should I do? My first, first and foremost, always speak with your gastro, uh, gastro uh, doc first. Talk to your doctor first, your primary doc first. And if you want to, you can always find the link down below. Then if you want to run things about, you know, with a, set, with a um, consultation, not a problem. We could go next. I go next. Next question, okay. Hi doctor, I just recently removed my gallbladder last couple months ago, two months ago. Now my right shoulder blade is tightness after eating. Should I take bile salts? Yes, because what do you have? You have that, like that phantom limb pain. Right shoulder dysfunction may be due to the fact that you don't have a gallbladder. And if you take the bile salts, it's worth a shot. Yes, your right shoulder pain could be your gallbladder. Why? Because when your gallbladder is inflamed and swollen, it irritates the phrenic nerve. The phrenic nerve stretches from the abdomen through the chest and into your neck. So each time you have a fatty meal, it aggravates the nerve and causes referred pain to your right shoulder blade. So yes, take the bile salts. Doc, I'm still confused here. I have an autoimmune disease, weight loss, and difficulty to digest protein. Should I take bile salts or tutka or NAC or betaine? Or should I take all of them? Yes, take all of them because why? Because you don't have a gallbladder. So yes, I've done videos on bile salts, tutka, main thing, tutka is phenomenal to clean up the liver pathway. NAC and acetylcysteine, yes, because that helps with the liver issues. It's a, again, NAC and acetylcysteine turns into glutathione, which is a master antioxidant of the liver. Or betaine, yes, betaine, betaine with food will help create more hydrochloric acid from the start. Now, the question is, when should I take betaine? Betaine is a substance that's made in the body. It's involved with liver function, cellular reproduction, and helping make carnitine acetyl L-carnitine. So it always, always take it either halfway through the meal or right at the end of the meal. Now taking it before a meal may create a false experience of heartburn and turn off the stomach acid production for the meal. However, do not take betaine if you don't, if you don't have hydrochloric acid and if you're taking any NSAIDs such as ibuprofen, Tylenol, or aspirin, do not take betaine. Can someone recommend a good brand of bile salts? I've been asking my health team about this and they are rude, laugh at me and tell me to stop going on the internet. This is very, very common. I'm so frustrated. I have a fatty liver and gallstones, so they want to focus on removing the gall gallbladder and now what's causing the issues of the low bile that's being created in the first place. This is very, very common. I've also had chronic constipation for years, so the fact that literally tell me None of this is connected to the gallbladder issue and let's just take out the gallbladder and all the problems will be solved. I'm not that convinced.
by removing my gallbladder, it impacts the bile even more. So how would that help my constipation when I need the, lubric the lubrication for the colon? They tell me nothing needs to be compensated for. I'm so annoyed. Yes, one of the reasons, again, the function of the gallbladder and the bile is to lubricate the colon. So if you take away that system, yeah, this is where you're going to have constipation, diarrhea, gas, bloating, uh, chronic issues, again, cholesterol, because remember the functions of bile is to help lower the LDL cholesterol. And yes, you are going to have forever problems. Again, you're going to have to take this supplement for the rest of your life, which they're probably not going to tell you. So I don't know how big the gallstones are that you have. So if they're too big, I don't know what you could do about it. I wish it'd be easier to work out if bile salts are for me. Remember, there's only one way to try it, and that's to try it. So if the bile salts are having a negative impact on you, remember, bile salts will increase the lubrication of the colon. So if you do have some slight diarrhea, just pull back. Take them with the big meals. Hey doctor, I had right I had right shoulder pain, low libido, ED, bloating, constipation, fatty stools, stopped dairy, gluten, and vegetable oils, and ate only meat fats and some bile salts, and it went away after two years. Congratulations. I have diarrhea and some pain in the right shoulder, ED, low libido. Bile salts made it worse. Now Consuming simple rice and vegetable curry and eating less fat seems disastrous. What do you suggest? How do I eat fat? It sounds like you may have less work on, I'd recommend working on the gut biome. You may need to get some uh, probiotics, prebiotics or probiotics to work on the gut biome to make sure that is sufficient because remember the, the bile gets broken down through the small intestines and then gets picked up with the microbiome and then back over to get conjugated, well, it, it, con it gets conjugated in the small intestines. So if you have bad bacteria in your small intestines, then let's work on correcting the bad bacteria. You gotta work on the diet. You have to make sure you have proper enough hydrochloric acid in your stomach. And in addition to, I would say, do N-acetylcysteine, or glutathione to you know clean up the liver pathway, drink a lot of water, and start slowly. I don't know how old you are, but again, if you have low libido and ED, then definitely, definitely that's all kind of combined with the horm with the hormones, also to stress. Stress modification is a big issue, and also exercise. Exercise is huge. All right, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, I'm gonna try something new. I'm just gonna go over, I'm trying to capture one video and go over the questions in detail with those videos. So I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a comment down below and take care. Be good.